Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with contributing editor Peter Clossy. How are you today? Very well, thank you. How are you? So, Peter, you're a, a, a lawyer, an investment banker, and a respected consultant for compliance, and you have been providing us with much-needed information about this Canadian anti-spam legislation, or CASEL as we call it. Can you please explain to our audience why this is one of the most actually uh, shocking pieces of legislation I've ever seen uh, happen? Glad to, Tracy. Um, I've been banging the CASEL drum for some time. Castle is so invasive, it touches everything that a business does, and yet we haven't given it the attention and the respect it deserves. Already, companies have been fined hundreds of thousands of dollars for being offside Castle, and yet it hasn't made its way to the mainstream yet. In 2016, this will be the number one issue for risk departments across every business to deal with. So for all of those in the mainstream that do not know what CASEL is, can you please explain what it is? Because it seems that many people are defining this incorrectly. CASEL is a piece of legislation with good intentions. It's meant to enhance Canada's economy and increase efficiencies by eliminating waste. That sounds great. So what the government has done is they passed a law that says if you send an electronic message to another person's account, you must have that person's consent before you send that message. Notice it doesn't say email. It says electronic communication. Notice it doesn't say email account. Legislation reads to an account. As a result, it is so broad, so encompassing, that it catches every aspect of your business. So for all of you entrepreneurs that are out there, say for instance you wanted to just send an email to a company uh, soliciting their interest in having a meeting, would that potentially violate CASEL? Potentially it could. There are some exceptions built into the statute, but if you think about it, that's a classic definition of spam, an unwanted, unsolicited email in your inbox. So yes, in most circumstances that would be spam and caught by CASEL. What terrifies me the most is that <laughs> in addition to, uh, as an entrepreneur, us being limited by the types of solicitations we can do and marketing that we can do, additionally, we are responsible for all of our employees or anyone utilizing our email address with our company. So for instance, if anyone in my team with an at investorintel.com sends an email to company B and they didn't want it, is it potential? I can potentially be fined, is that correct? In many ways it's like environmental liability law. The person who actually affects the spill is liable, but so too can be the officers, the directors, and the corporation that employs that person. I've read that both Porter Airlines and Rogers have both been fined, I think $150,000 and $200,000. Can, you, can you tell us how or why they were fined? Th and this is what makes Castle so scary. Porter Airlines was fined because its unsubscribe mechanism was hard to find and Porter could not prove that everyone on its email list had subscribed to the email list. Rogers was fined because the unsubscribe mechanism did not always work. So imagine you're sending an email. The law requires you to have an unsubscribe mechanism built into that email. It must work and it must work within 10 days and if not you face a $200,000 fine minimum, just like what happened to Rogers Communication. But the larger problem isn't the fine. The larger problem is the legal cost of dealing with it. It's easy to imagine that Rogers spent upwards of two to three million dollars on in-house and external legals to deal with this problem. That's where many companies are going to get hammered. This reminds me of Sarbanes-Oxley when it first came out and, you know, is there a castle911.com we can go to or, Peter, where do we go for help or is this just an, an effort by Castle to employ all of our entire legal system? Castle reminds me of the old joke about the elephant with six blind men feeling it. What an elephant feels like depends what part of the elephant you're grabbing. To the accountants, Castle is one thing. To the lawyers, Castle is something else. What are needed are business consultants who understand CASEL end-to-end -end and who can help companies find the right software solution for that company. That solution should be minimally invasive and foolproof. Well, of course, we at Investor Intel are going to be having Peter update our audience regularly on some of maybe the solutions that we can utilize to safeguard ourselves. There are 
to date, I've only found two companies out of the hundreds I've spoken to who are actually in CASEL compliance. The larger problem that people face is the CRTC recently had a warrant issued, allowing it to go into someone's place of business and seize the email server with the assistance of the RCMP. Well, Peter, thank you so much for joining us today to update us on what I deem to be one of the harshest laws I've ever seen to basically restrict the entrepreneur. Thanks again, and I hope you'll come back regularly to update us on Absol this. Absolutely. Castle is here to stay, and everyone must deal with it.